Hello everyone, it's Sylvia from Fairlight Tarot. Welcome to my channel. If you're a Sunlight or a Starlight member, you will be seeing this video one week before everyone else as part of your membership perks so that you can reach out to me if there's any of these decks that might be of interest to you. This is, sorry, I forgot to say, this is my monthly rehoming video. So I'm just going to show you the decks, the tarot and oracle decks that are going to leave my collection this month. And as always, this uh, means absolutely nothing uh, when it comes to the uh, way in which I appreciate the decks. Um, most of the time it's because I get a hold of um, more than one copy of a deck and so I sell the ones that, uh, you know, the, 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 uh, certain, the, the plus ones. And in some other cases, for example, I got a hold of a different edition of the deck and so I'm selling either the mass market or the previous or the, um, uh, the next edition of a deck. And uh, But the, there's a bit of everything, so let's see what I've got. So let's start with this one. This is not necessarily an oracle deck. It's called the uh, Listening to Flowers. Um, by Dina Salisi, illustrated by Audrey Violet, and um, it's a positive affirmation deck uh, using the back flowers. And I used to be fascinated by the um, philosophy behind the back flowers. Um, this is, by the way, absolutely um, not the, the spine of this has not been broken. I am always extremely careful whenever I look at uh, books, especially when it's a deck that I'm not entirely sure that I want to keep. I just make sure that everything is pristine. So when I do the site, if I do the site to reharm it, then uh, you know I can offer the same um, the deck with the same kind of uh, pristine features. It's a really beautiful deck. Uh, it's printed on art paper, and so it's actually really really nice. Uh, the images are really gorgeous as well and uh, to each and every one of these obviously there is the corresponding uh, back flower and if you flip the card you will see what it says. So for Ravain uh, we have a, an affirmation. So I relax and allow life to unfold peacefully. I transform tension into calm. I soften my views and trust in a higher power. So um, these are really really beautiful. Obviously it's a botanical themed deck. Um, sometimes you can also, if, especially if you know the properties of these plants, you can actually use it uh, for divination purposes. Um, I Let me just have a look at the book. So for example, okay, now it, I thought that uh, there would have been a bit more about information about the um, uh, the plants, but at the beginning uh, you do have something. So, so say so here for example it says loneliness, water violet, impatient heather, and uh, and obviously then you have the cards. But it does refer back to the groups of the uh, back flowers to which they refer to, and uh, I guess that's also something that you can probably use in a divination system if you want, or at least. Any other use you can do of a, um, a botanical theme oracle deck. As I said, really, really beautiful, but I don't know anything about it. And uh, when I got it, I thought to myself, I'm going to have time and I'm going to be able to go down the rabbit hole and have a look at what um, these uh, do, what the meanings are, uh, what actually the uh, back flowers do. And I just never had time. And uh, it just is such a beautiful deck and it just sits there on the shelf gathering dust and I think it's just not very fair to the deck itself. And you will see that this is mainly what drives me when I'm rehoming, when I'm doing a rehoming um, call on my decks. Because I, I just feel that uh, many of these decks have so much power and such a vibrant energy. And it's really unfair of me to just let them, you know, on, on the shelves and not do anything about them. The second deck is um, another one that is strictly speaking not an oracle nor a tarot deck. It's the deck of mushrooms. And I feel like 2023 has been the year of mushrooms because we had so many tarot decks and oracle decks, especially with uh, mushrooms as a theme. 
And so during the Mushroom Mania of 2023, I bought pretty much all of them. And now I feel like I actually rehomed almost, almost all of them, I would say. And uh, this one is extremely informative. So obviously you've got the images in here. Uh, but on the images themselves, you only see the English name for the specific mushroom and the Latin name and uh, you have to flip the card and then you can see all sorts of information pertaining to that. So you've got appearance, growth and uses. Um, it's very, very unique. Um, it's again, it's a really um, not as great a art uh, paper as the Listening to Flowers deck. But it is a very um, high quality deck and I have been using it a few times in combination with the all of the other mushroom stack that I had accumulated during the year the midnight magic the magical what was it the mushroom spirit oracle uh, that one was published by Rockpool I seem to remember and there were a few others indie decks always uh, themed uh, after mushrooms and it works really well besides one of these because most of these you can actually find most of these mushrooms you can actually find them in uh, the other decks mushroom decks but in itself because i rehomed most of the others i feel that this one is just kind of lonely and so it's definitely gonna go to a new loving home that will be you know will be able to appreciate it and uh, perhaps even use it for you know their personal knowledge as opposed to perhaps using it as an oracle and just in in order uh, so i'm also this i have decided to rehome the adorbita i love these decks i have the pithia botanica and i have the uh, ophidia rosa uh, by the same creator i unfortunately i cannot really find any specific space in my collection or more likely in my tarot practice when it comes to the Ador adorbita uh, deck which is indeed very beautiful um, nicole rallis by the way is the name of the creator it's very beautiful i really love this deck i mean look everything about it is fantastic even the uh, uh, the two pieces box and uh, there's uh, a leaflet here with all the meanings of the cards and the cardstock is, is phenomenal and uh, I love what I really love about these decks especially the Ophidia Rosa is the color choices of the edges I mean isn't this absolutely fantastic it might be one of the most beautiful edging work I've ever seen and especially because when you do that you see the difference in yellow this orangey yellow with the blue of the backs and it's just absolutely fantastic what happens with this deck is that uh, there's nothing wrong with it it's beautiful i almost never used it i do look at it every now and then and i just convince myself that it's gonna go to a better home simply because i when i feel that i need this kind of the color palette minimalist art style i actually reach out for the ophidia rosa which is one of my favorite decks and so this one is always it's always as if it were the little sister of the ophidia rosa and it's very unfair to this deck even though the theme is different because the orbita does refer back to the uh, the planets as well but then again if i had a bigger book um, you know i would probably get into it uh, but well, I don't and I don't even think that it has been released uh, or, is, or ever that it's actually meant to be read uh, you know with a bigger book so um, the information that I've got is not really enough for me to be able to understand um, the Ador beta part of this deck and so since I don't really understand it I just refer back to the Ophidia Rosa every time I, I feel like I want this kind of art style. So this is just going to go to someone who's going to love it much more than I do, or I did. And it's the Adorbita uh, Tarot by Nicole Rallis. And uh, let's see what else I've got. So um, as I said, just randomly. So the Power of Intention, a 50 card deck by Dr. Wayne W. Dyer. This is an interesting deck and I remember I have actually been using it quite a fair bit when I got a hold of it. I like it because the it's very simple, it looks almost as if it were 
um, you know, that simplicity of the Lenormand or Keeper Carnodex, it's not. Um, it's got sentences, but the, um, the association between the images and the sentences is actually really nice. Like the watering can with be kind, for example, banished out with uh, the, the artist, I don't remember what this uh, what this is called, but they uh, they work in a circus and most of the time oh, it could also be an athlete doing some performance at the Olympics, but it's obviously banished out because you always doubt in yourself that you can actually do um, <laughs> what you're supposed to be doing or what you want to do. Be humble with the pie, you know, humble pie. Grasp the essence of infinity, of course, with the uh, camera. Find your purpose and so on and so forth. And it's really beautiful and all of the backgrounds change. And uh, now I don't know if you can probably, you can probably tell, but it's a semi-gloss kind of cardstock, which is one of the problems for me about this deck that it, 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 the cards tend to stick together and it's very difficult to actually fan them out. I really, really do love the association between the images um, which are very minimalist as well and the sentences or the messages at the bottom of the cards and on top of everything if you flip the card there's actually even more so when we look at this one meditate regularly with the, a, a clock you have take some time to be silent and repeat the sound of God as an inner mantra meditation allows you to make conscious contact with your source and regain the power of intention Ironically, that's Power of Intention is the name of the deck. Uh, what happens is that I don't use this deck because I feel like uh, it, it would be best used by someone who is uh, who probably does um, believe in God. And uh, in my case, it's complicated. You know, when you update your relationship started on Facebook, or at least us, we, need, we used to do that all the time. I don't think that Facebook now is very popular anymore. But you know when... You put, you put it from a uh, relationship status, is complicated and that's where I am basically. And so I just don't feel cold uh, to use this deck because I just don't feel uh, like uh, it resonates with me or uh, that I actually agree with uh, the messages on the card. But the concept is fantastic. I love that. I love the concept of... Uh, you know, associating these images, which is very, as I said, very minimalist, but very effective to the card, for the, the bottom of the card message. And I know that I could just focus on these and not necessarily read the backs. Um, but I, as always, I mean, I'm rehoming this because it can be used by someone else and I'm pretty sure that there will be someone that will appreciate it a lot more uh, than I did. And then the next two, it kind of breaks my heart, but I just don't use them. And this is, again, it falls into the category of saying, I'm not doing you justice. I'm just going to try and rehome you and see whether someone else will be um, honoring you. And uh, these are both by the same creator, Olivia Rose. And I just absolutely love the art style. And uh, I've shown the Mind's Eye Tarot a few times in my channel. I just don't feel like I reach for either of them and especially even less so the Heart's Eye Oracle. Uh, this is an indie deck and this is a mass market deck, so the Taurus mass market. I don't know whether they will release the uh, Oracle deck as a mass market deck as well. These are incredibly beautiful decks. I mean, as you can see, the art style is amazing. The colors are fantastic. And I follow Olivia Rose's Instagram account and I love everything she does. It's just that, and the keywords especially are excellent. I really cannot deal with these borders. These borders to me, had it stopped, you know, at the black border here, I would have been happier, but the fact that uh, it has, it does have an additional skin color um, um, border. I, I just really don't like them. And uh, I cannot even modify this deck because as you can see, the keyword is in between the black lines. So had it been a bit further up, I would have just cut off the, uh, the pink border. But then again, it is an indie deck and I think that now it's out of print and uh, I just told myself never to modify an indie deck ever again, especially the ones that go out of print. 
I can still do that if it comes to mass market decks where, that are re readily available. But when it comes to indie decks, I just don't do it anymore. And so this is, it's really beautiful. I'm just going to show you together how they read. So the Manzai Tarot, this is a mass market deck and it has been published by uh, US Games. I have to say one of the reasons why I'm not using it is because really the guidebook brings me nothing. Um, it is very general, it doesn't give you any kind of additional insight or layer of uh, interpretation or knowledge. Um, yes, I love that there is a full page in colour with the card, but then again I've got the cards. I just wanted to know what the artists were thinking about choosing that particular artwork. And as I said, it's one of those decks, the cardstock is amazing, it's a very soft linen finish by the way. Uh, it's got a really powerful, very nice looking gold gilding. And uh, because it is a mass market deck, to be honest, if I feel like I really want it, I am not, I, I'm not beyond rebuying a deck, especially if it's a mass market deck. I mean, in some cases I bought indie decks and I rehomed in like the Pagan Other Worlds, for example, I'm in a love-hate relationship with that deck. I keep on buying it and rehoming them because the card suck is just driving me insane because I, every time I shuffle it, I have to hike around the room to pick up the cards that are just flying away from me. Uh, so it clearly, clearly doesn't want me. But as you can see, obviously these two pair up really well together because the art style is the same and uh, you're not even too disturbed by the presence of borders in the cards of the Oracle. But what happens is that these two, it makes me feel like these two can only be paired up one with the other and when I do pair them up even though it's incredible that we have the same kind of characters on the other hand they become very busy uh, which is kind of frustrating for me um, because um, there's just so many elements to look at there's so many line and I know that it's very specific to this kind of artwork it, it is like this and it's beautiful because it is so special and unique but on the other hand, what I'm reading, I kind of need something less overwhelming when it comes to um, sen the senses. And also what happens is that I kind of tend to see the tarot deck as a, a little bit dark, not as in meaning, but it, literally as in color or, you know, the presence of brightness or the absence of brightness in this case. And uh, something that I couldn't really see in the Oracle deck and I do think that it might be related to the fact that one it doesn't have borders perhaps uh, the fact that this one appears a little bit brighter depends on the bright borders but also because the probably the cardstock is making it look a little bit more dull when it comes to the colors and I can see through the lens now and I can see that you can't really tell in the sense that obviously the lens is applying a layer of sharpening and white balance and so it, it doesn't feel that way, but I can assure you that in real life it's a, 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 let's say, a bit of a darker kind of deck. And I would love for it to be um, a bit brighter. I would probably use it more. And again, please understand, I love it and I love Olivia Rose's work. It's fantastic. It's just that um, I don't find myself reaching out for these two decks and I just really want them to go to someone who is going to be able to appreciate them. Uh, definitely more than me. So these, as I said, both by the same author. It's the Arts Eye Oracle. This is an indie deck. And by the way, there's another oracle by the same creator, which is called the Mermaid's Purse. Also indie, but I don't know whether it, that one will come out mass market or not. And the Mind's Eye Tarot. This one is a mass market deck published by um, US Games. I think last year. It's not a super new deck, but it's not an old one either. And so these two for sure. And then I'm so sorry to say that I try my best to try and see whether I resonate with this deck, but it just doesn't work for me. And I really did try. I mean, if you follow my channel, you will know how many times I actually try to connect with this deck and it just doesn't do any, anything for me. And um, and, and it's not, it gets to the point that I feel like 
I'm cringy when I see it because I'm like, oh, I should really work with this deck and then no matter what I try and do, I reach out for a different deck every time. And it's a beautiful deck. Look, we've got Frida. Of course, it's a beautiful deck. Frida has the Queen of Cups. Um, it's very empowering. Uh, it does have that kind of cosmic vibes that I do associate with other decks. And that might probably be the problem because it means that uh, I have other decks that fill this space in my collection. And when I reach out for, I don't, when I feel like I want those kind of vibes, I reach out for the other decks and not this one. And so, sorry, I forgot to say, it's the Serpent Fire Tarot duh, by the Bunny Wolf. And she also is the creator of uh, the, um, the She Wolf Tarot and the Celestial, but no, um, there's another deck, sorry, I don't remember the name. And uh, the Bunny was saying that this is the seventh and last edition. She has no intention of coming out with an eighth edition of this deck. And I think now it's even out of print. And so I'm thinking, okay, well, you know, there's probably someone who missed out on this deck and uh, they probably want it. And, uh, and so I'll, I'll just, you know, I'll just rehome it. I'll just rehome it. I, uh, I give up on my quest uh, to try and find some kind of connecting point uh, with the deck, which really does not mean anything. It just means it's very personal. And um, you know what I mean? It's that deck that you really want to love, but I'm just not. Uh, I'm just not paying it enough attention and it, again it's it's really got to do with me and, and nothing with the tarot deck. Then there's this one which is the Bonfire Tarot, uh, the mass market edition that I don't, I have the book but I, I think I'm gonna keep the book so it's just the cards not even the box and the reason why I'm rehoming this is because I love this deck so much that I actually splurged on the indie deck so this deck is amazing. Uh, I just can't wait to receive the indie deck because this is just so beautiful. I love everything about it. I love the symbology. I love the colors. I love the contrast and the vibrancy of these colors. And uh, I love the fact that for once, I love the fact that it's in a glossy cardstock because it does make the colors pop even more. I love how it reads. I, it's a wonderful deck. I, I couldn't recommend this enough. It's just really, really beautiful. Very symbolic. It's now that we're in areas, um, you know, I would definitely uh, recommend it for that kind of a really fiery energy. Uh, but it is one of those decks that really asks for some kind of a confrontation and uh, it, it's got a very direct way to address a number of things so it's a very sharp shooter when you're reading with it for example for yourself I also use it for clients as well because it does have that kind of a directness that I like and uh, by Gabby Angus West she lives in uh, uh, only 600 kilometers north from where I live and I just, you know, I would never rehome this deck. It's just that, as I said, I did receive, or, or I, I just purchased the uh, the indie edition, and so I'm just gonna let the uh, mass market edition go. The mass market is not only still in print. By the way, sorry, I forgot to mention this is the. I think it's the first edition mass market. There is a second edition that has recently came out and it's in linen. The cardstock is in linen, but this is not. This is a glossy cardstock. So um, in case you were wondering, because I know that there's a few uh, that were waiting to get the um, mass market because of that. So this one is the Nightfall Tarot and this one is another one that makes me cringe every time I see it because it's been heavily modified, as you can see. It's been trimmed off. It had, it used to have huge borders. And I also not only trimmed it, but I also um, decorated the, uh, the edges. So first I edged it in a dark, uh, well, it's black basically. And then I put some stars. I um, draw some stars on them. The artwork is very beautiful. I actually really like this deck. What happened with this was when I got it, I, um, I bought it in Thailand and it's completely legit. I bought it from Kinokuniya in Bangkok. What happened was that uh, whether it's because of the temperatures, uh, the heat, 
or um, I don't know what happened but all of the cards were sticking together and I remember filming these videos and having to apologize every couple of seconds and here I am doing the same all over again so the cards were sticking together and I thought to myself it's probably because of the glue of the edging so let's just go ahead and trim the edging off and I did and guess what, they still stick together. So I have no idea why these are sticking together like that. Um, so if you obviously, oh, sorry, I forgot to mention, uh, you're welcome to reach out to me. If you're a Starlight or a Starlight member, uh, you pr have precedence, but just be aware that uh, because of shipping costs being absolutely ridiculous, um, I will only sell, I will only rehome um, indie decks overseas. So uh, if you're based in Australia, you can reach out for any of these decks. If you're based overseas, uh, please just reach out about the indie decks or it could be a mass market deck that is out of print. Because trust me, if it's a mass market deck that is still in print, you don't want to uh, buy it from me because it will be so much cheaper for you to get it from your local metaphysical store or your Amazon or uh, anything. So as I said, this deck is just, it's, um, I've done a good job of trimming if I say so myself, um, but it's just that I don't know for what reason it is still sticking, the cards are still sticking together. And I know for a fact that you only need to use the magician powder and just coat it with the magician, magician powder and so they will not be sticking it anymore. But I just, uh, I never had time to do so and every time I see it I remind myself that I should and that I never do and uh, I just think that someone else will love uh, this deck. So, and it has been trimmed but it's an RWS so it's, it's very easy to um, to tell the cards and uh, then let me show you so this one is a very e recent oracle published by um, Rockpool it's called the Oracle of Heaven and Hell which is basically it's two decks together in one and uh, it, it used to be called the Angel Tarot and the Occult Tarot by Travis McHenry but Rockpool just um, you know, made a combination of those two and put them all together in one. Now, the reason why I'm rehoming this one is because I've actually found a copy that uh, has the box, uh, which is a lot snuggier and which means that it, um, when you pick it up by the top, for example, it doesn't fall uh, because this one was driving me insane. And see, it's really small details like this, but, you know, sometimes when uh, you like things the way you want them and yeah that's one of the reasons why I'm rehoming this so this is so I have a, a, a different copy of this one it's a really beautiful deck very very interesting uh, if you're into angels and demons this will give you the opportunity to go down the rabbit hole because it gives you all um, just a little bit of information that you might want to dig into and it is a chunky deck so as I said it's two, two decks put together it's got this really beautiful red gilding. Um, I um, have only used this one a couple of times, so the gilding is still intact, as you can see. And it's just a really beautiful, beautiful deck. I, um, if you're familiar with the Angel Tarot and the Occult Tarot, you will definitely recognize some of these characters here, the, some of the angels, some of the demons. Um, I love the fact that we've got keywords so you can definitely, this is one of those decks that has actually been designed to be shuffled with reversals and so um, you know you'll be able to follow up on what the messages are whether it's referring to a demon or an angel to a positive message or a cautious mes message and as I said I don't know, uh, I reckon I only know 15% or 20% maximum of these angels and demons uh, and so it's incredibly interesting. If you are into these kind of things, uh, it is incredibly interesting. Um, obviously the book is not big enough to give you all of the information that you might want to have on these characters, but you can take the name and, and do a Google search and I'm sure you'll find all sorts of resources um, to use. So this deck also pair up really, really well with both the True Black and the Ephemia Tarot. So I highly recommend it if you like those two decks. And as I said, I'm just uh, rehoming this copy because 
it's not defective and I guess most of the decks will have this kind of, you know, the, the box uh, that opens uh, this easily. It's just that I actually was lucky enough to find a copy that was uh, kind of more snug, it's that more snug and, and um, I do uh, prefer that one to this one. So this is the Oracle of Heaven and Hell and we've come to the last deck and now this one though is um, so I have to be 100% honest with you guys this is a legit copy it's not a pirate copy it's not a fake copy uh, but it is a uh, translated copy so this is the modern witch tarot deck by Lisa Sterler and um, it's originally by Liminal 11 However, Liminal 11 has ceded the rights to a few other publishers around the world. I believe there is a French deck and, uh, and this is a, uh, a Turkish deck. So I actually bought it in, uh, um, I bought it in, um, in Turkey from a legitimate uh, bookstore. And I asked them several times, it does come with the um, um, a barcode, so um, and it it's got all sorts of you know uh, legitimate uh, kind of of signs. So it's definitely not. It's got a guidebook as well. Obviously, it is in Turkish. And uh, whilst I was in Paris, I had a possibility to have a look at the French edition of this deck. And the cardstock is exactly the same. So it is a bit on the thin side, but it still feels quite sturdy. And, uh, and it's everything else is exactly the same so obviously um, if you know this deck it's pretty much another blue eyes kind of clone um, it's really beautiful and the only reason why I'm rehoming this one is because I finally uh, got the uh, English edition so I don't need the Turkish edition anymore and this is just gonna go to someone who doesn't mind anything. But you know what I was thinking, to be honest, it's also very easy to trim because it's such a clear reader. Uh, this is clearly Nine of Swords. So, uh, you know, either you don't pay attention to the words if that is distracting to you or you just can trim it, you know, trim off the, uh, the borders and the titles with them. And so if you're not familiar with this deck, it's actually really nice. Uh, it reads like a charm. And uh, I now that I have the English guidebook, I can actually appreciate how intense and powerful this deck is. A thing that I wasn't able to do when I just had the Turkish edition, because obviously um, I, I could still reach out for it and I could still read with it, obviously because it's an AWS clone, but also uh, because of Google Translate nowadays it's becoming easier and easier to read in a different language that you don't know. But so, no, I just wanted to say I never, not once, show a fake deck simply because I don't have any. And I would never do that. I have way too much respect for the creators. Now, that was it for today and... Um, yeah, that, these are all the decks that I'm going to rehome in the month of April. So again, if you're a Sunlight or a Starlight member, you are seeing this video one week before everyone else. And so if you want, if you've seen any, if you're overseas, if you've seen any indie deck that you would like to get from me, then uh, please feel free to reach out. And uh, otherwise, I'm, I'm just going to post it in uh, the usual uh, Facebook group. That's it for now. Thanks so much for being with me till the end of this video. See you next time.